Hello, and welcome to our author uh, interview series. Today we have Jess Hong, who wrote one of my favorite books, Lovely. And I'm really excited. So my name is Dwen. I am the Communications and Operations Associate at Tandem. And I'm really excited to be sitting here today with Jess. As am I. And if everyone wants to check out this book, we have a link to it on our Facebook page. You should go buy a copy. It's really beautiful. Mm, thank you. So I have some questions for you. And the first question is, when did you start writing? OK. Um, that, when people ask me that, it's, it's funny because I, I don't consider myself a writer like by any mm. means. I actually don't, don't write. I'm not a writer. Uh, that is probably my only example of anything I've ever officially written. I mean, you know. Minus like blogs and you know, right. your own like blogging stuff, but like, um, yeah, no, that is like as, as far as like writing for books, writing for children's books, like Lovely is pretty much my first and only, hopefully not only, you know, hopefully there'll be future only projects. for now, only for now, my first, my first writing project, right? Yes, so arts, my last semester of art school. Okay, <laughs> so it was a school like a project. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. that's really cool. And when did you start drawing since you came to it as an artist first? I, I've always drawn. Um, it's been, you know, it's been my main hobby since I was a kid. I loved, always loved drawing, painting, mm -hmm. anything creative. Um, so it's always been like, just like a general hobby of mine. Mm -hmm. And I, I dropped off a little during like kind of college years. I lost touch with it a little bit. And then I, I went back to art school. I went to the Academy of Art when I was, 27. Oh, cool. So before that you did something not art related in college? I did all kinds of things <laughs> that were not art related. I, um, <laughs> I was a telemarketer for a minute, which was, which was as horrible as it sounds. Um, I, I sold shoes to wealthy people. I was a assistant, a shop girl at a, at a, at a tattoo shop. Wow. Basically did like a lot of odd right. jobs. I, I, I didn't know, you know, it, I was one of those who, it, it took a, a little while for me to really figure out like what I want to do. Right. So find my woman awesome. happy. Yeah. And what inspired you to make Lovely? Was it um, a particular like thing that happened or just an idea you had or what? So um, that project came about in my last semester at the academy. Mm -hmm. um, they offer two children's books mm -hmm. classes. And the first year, you're really just learning. Um, you're, you know, taking other stories and making illustrations based on those stories or poems or what, whatever. Um, but the second class, you basically, it's just you're thrown in. You create your own your own children's book right. dummy from scratch, and that is just what you do for the entire class. So, you know, like we had a choice to pick a topic. You could either pick. An existing story and kind of make it your own or do something different mm -hmm. I figured you know in, in a semester like a few months like I'm it's probably gonna be you're gonna be like this like I'm gonna, yeah. be, I'm gonna be working on this project day and night like for a really long time I should should pick something that I felt that was important to me mm -hmm. felt like it was a good message I and I think it's a more of a conceptual book it's not really word heavy right so Something that was easy for me to, for me to translate into a book that didn't require so much story narrative storytelling. Right. Yeah. And did you start art school with the goal of like I will make a children's book, or how, what? What point did you decide children's books sound like fun? Yeah. No, I super didn't. I, I started art school. You know, it was it was I was still selling shoes, <laughs> and like my family and friends like finally gave me the push. It's like, what are you doing? You know, you right. love you love art, you love those illustration, you love drawing, you should go back to school, like what are you doing? Stop this. Like and so I went in completely terrified, not knowing what I what I wanted. And then, you know, it, it changed my life. It completely it gave me direction. I I felt like I was really doing what I've been meant to be meant to do. Right. Um and I, I didn't I hadn't considered children's books. Um I you know, I took the first children's book, book illustration class because I thought it sounded fun and I really loved the teacher, Julie Downing, she's awesome, <laughs> she who teaches that class. So I was like, oh yeah, that seems like a really, you know, a fun class, like let me take it. And then it was just so fun. 
Right. The first class, you know, I, I fell in love with children's book illustration. It's just taking a story and just like making a narrative illustration. It, it was just a lot of fun. And I, so from that class, I like, I think I really fell in love with like right. the concept of children's book art, children's book writing. And then the second class was like a total challenge. You know, I didn't, I didn't think it was, like I didn't imagine myself being able to do something like that, but you know, it was, it was the right circumstances that like led to right led to that right no awesome and it's yeah. great dude because it's a beautiful book thank it's you. it is i think maybe my favorite book in our entire collection oh thank it's you it's just so, so much. pretty thank you um and i'm curious so because you you came to um art school like not planning for a children's book and all that like how when you were writing it did no. you approach it first as like here are pictures or did you have the text first or did it kind of happen together you know it yeah it, that was a the whole the process was just like everywhere i felt because it was something so foreign to me, right. but also, like, so, I was so fortunate to have the guidance of my teacher and that group mm. of students, you know, we were all senior students at that point, so, you know, very well versed, really, really talented group, so to have, like, the critique of, right. of like, my fellow students and my teacher, it was, it was really essential in that, so, like, I had right. a lot of, like, structural help. But as far as putting the story together, I I had some loose idea in the beginning that I wanted it to be, you know, I was like, oh, I want to do a more conceptual book that mm -hmm. is about inclusion and diversity, and it's just a really good message, and I should try to, well, and it came, it started with, like, a very loose concept and kind of just formed itself. Like, I wrote, I think I, I wrote the book, literally wrote the book on, like, post-its and, like, kind of moved stuff around mm -hmm. and, like... You know, really, I drew a lot of inspiration. I, you know, I read a lot of children's books during that time, mm -hmm. and I hadn't even even been. I wasn't even really versed in children's books. I was. It was not an industry I was super familiar with. Mm -hmm. So I just, I read a lot of different books, kind of drew a lot of inspiration. Like, how did they write this? How do they structure? You know, this story. How? Where are the breaks? Like, where are the? And, and right. Just learning as I went. <laughs> yeah. And was part of the class at the end that you would send it to a publisher, or did that just sort of happen? Mm -hmm. That was, yeah, no, it was always, it was always a thing that, um, they, yeah, they were like, yeah, like, this is a, this is an end goal, um, at the end of the class, they had a planned field trip. Oh, cool. To Chronicle. Oh. We got to bring our portfolios and our dummies, and, right. yeah, so it was like, the end goal was like, oh, like, have your, have your dummies ready, right. polished, you know, we're gonna go on a field trip to Chronicle, right. and, like, you're gonna put all your portfolios and your book dummies on the table, and, you know they're gonna come in like and look at them and um, the the editor the children's book editor you know talked to us when we went when we visited we got to talk to a little bit of staff mm -hmm. and it was a nice experience so yeah the end goal was like maybe yeah. maybe they'll like it <laughs> yeah right that's yeah. a really cool way to do that that's really neat yeah to like have a finished product ready to go to somebody to some yeah hopefully yeah. you know maybe so that there was always yeah. like that like that little hope you know right. like it's you know it's insanely like a, it's difficult to like even right. like get something published, but like it was very cool to, very cool to just be able to visit and like see the right. office and like talk to people in the industry. That was yeah. That was Did nice. that help you figure out what it would be like when your book was getting published? Like when you were doing the process of getting it you know, made into this? Did that help when you were trying to figure out what happens next? I did a little bit. I. I was really nervous that day. I mean, fair. Yeah. <laughs> I think I was just like, I was like, oh, like, it's happening, maybe. And then, you know, just the, the anticipation of like, maybe, right. I don't like it, like, was, you know, it's very exciting. And, yeah. You know, to go in. And at that, also, that was mixed with, like, I was graduating that semester. So combined with all these other things, like, am I going to be able to be a working artist? Am I going to make it? Is it going right. to be okay? Is it, you know, and all this stuff. It, but yeah, it was a, it was helpful to be able to talk to people in the industry and kind mm -hmm. of had an idea. Um, and also, uh, a lot of times the academy will they do mix in a lot of like real world like when you get out to the real world like you know you're gonna have to. My teacher also did really talk a lot about like you're gonna have to like send your dummy out to people and then have them you know look at it and might go into the slush pile might not and like right. she she did talk a lot about right. that side of it, like, you're gonna have to try and right. see, like, if it works. Yeah. So, uh, so a question I have, because I have looked at this book a lot, is there's a lot of really different kinds of characters in here, and I'm curious, 
were any of these people inspired by real people that you knew, or were they all 100%. just... 100%. Okay, yeah. <laughs> is there a version of you in this book? Yeah, there is. It, I, I'm on the cover, actually. Which one are you? I'm, the, I'm on the cover on the back. <laughs> I'm I'm, the, I'm in the hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really great way. Uh, for yeah. you to As you said, this is your favorite food. It's um, it's definitely top three, okay. and I, I mean, I just love hot like as a concept. <laughs> I have a weird hot dog thing. My friends know I have a weird. I have a costume like. It's not really me, like you know, no right. one would know. But then my fr- like everyone know. who knows yeah. us knows us. Right. That's definitely right. me. Yeah. So are all the characters basically you know, or just like the majority not of them, or part of them? Part of them, you, like, that's my friend, my very good friend, Michelle Lee, on the cover. Mm-hmm. I love you, if you're watching. <laughs> this is my friend. Um, yeah, there's a there's a lot of people in the book that, right. yeah, I drew inspiration from. Um, and I think, I think it's just, you know, being, like, being in the Bay Area, like, you just, luckily, you know, right. you get exposed to, like, so many different types of people. Right. It was it was easy, um, and I tried really hard to, and you know it, that got polished as it went on. Like you know, so many people, so many people made like really good input. Like you know, you could include like this type of person or this type of person. It was right. I think you know living here, it was it was easy to brainstorm with a lot of right. people about like what can I include, what can you right? Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and so one of the other things is that, I mean, it is a super diverse book, right? There are all kinds of different people in here, which is one of the things that makes it so appealing to so many people because everyone can see like a little bit of themselves in here. Uh, and what, what do you think is so important about highlighting all these diverse forms of beauty? It's, I just think it's really, it's important to, to teach that at a young age, to try right. to teach the concept of, you know, we are, we're all different. There's so many different types of people and I really, really wish, you know, that could just be normalized, like accepted. Um, and I think it's, well, being Asian American, like I did, you know, when I, when I was growing up, even in the Bay Area, like there was many people, I grew up with a lot of, all kinds of people and I had a lot of Asian friends, but I, I rarely saw myself in media, like in right. books and TV and movies, I was that was something I hungered for. I really wished there was more, like you know, oh, like be nice to see me in 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 these you know these forms of art and like if I really that made me really happy to think about it's like if I could do that for someone right and they could see themselves in this and then see that like yeah you're lovely we all are you know we're different right. but we're lovely that's what makes us makes us great right. like the idea of that really appealed to me and right really pushed the the concept of the book yeah that's great i mean that's definitely something we talk a lot about at work is how important it is that you can see yourself yeah. in the world around you because for kids that's i mean that's how they know it that they're they can see themselves and see reflections of their life around them yeah that's really cool i really like that uh, and going on to the story part of this <laughs> a little bit what do you think um is the value of storytelling with young children like why why bother making children's books that are diverse and and uh, interesting and beautiful? I think you know kids are, I, it's difficult to, it's not difficult to I think talk at a kid or tell them to do something, but I think it is difficult to be good at engaging them. Mm-hmm. And I think if you can do it in a fun, colorful, creative way, something that draws their attention and like, you know, right. it's art too. If people, you know, they they want to be able to be engaged and like have fun learning something i think that's everything and you know children's storytelling is right. that's, that's why it's so great it's you can you have the opportunity to teach them something in in a fun engaging way right yeah so then after a semester of uh, two semesters of children's book classes after two semesters of children's book classes and making your own children's book i'm guessing you're at least more of an expert on children's book than many are uh, to you, what makes a really, like, what makes a story, a children's book, engaging and powerful and interesting? Like, what makes it, like, good? I, I still wouldn't call myself. <laughs> I mean, more than many. More than, yeah, yeah. No, no. Oh, okay. I know some stuff. Okay. <laughs> She's like, I gotta remember. I know some stuff. Um, I, you know, for me, I, well, I think it's because I'm an artist, so right. that's probably that's probably why, you know, I feel this mm-hmm. way, but I think for me, a lot, a lot of times, it's like, 
the art right does the art grab you does it you know pull you in is it you know are the compositions good is like the style fun is it something i've ever seen before so a lot of times like the art is like really something that grabbed me first and then you know reading it of course you know there's books where the art is great and then story is kind of a little lackluster or doesn't quite you know match Mm -hmm. how impactful the art is and that's always disappointing so of course you know if you have like if you have an engaging story that's mixed with that makes it you know a great book and I think a lot of times even it doesn't even have to have that many words like a lot of the children that I'm drawn to there aren't even that many words in it it's like more of a conceptual right book and I think those can be really powerful too if they're done well yeah yeah I have to ask a question do you have a favorite one of these characters in the book favorite one that you or your favorite drawing that you did or your favorite there there are two I think it's got to be the unibrow girl oh I love like, the unibrow girl it's gotta, that's she, how I knew this book was in yeah <laughs> she's got to be like she's yeah she's probably my favorite and and then um, probably someone I call Old Jen, who is my best friend. <laughs> She's not old, but this is how I think I imagine her to be when she gets old. I gotta like, tell you, my favorite one in this whole book, like besides my eyebrow girl, which was, again, that was one where I was like, oh, oh, I love this. But I think one of my favorite ones, I think it's just so beautiful. Yeah, is this one here. That's she my so beautiful. That's in my top three too. I, I love this spread actually. I, yeah, yeah, it's really great. You can actually tell that. <laughs> the, so the timing of this book, like, kind of, it was a little crazy towards the end because right. there was um, there's time constraints because of certain deals. Or, so I was right. like, which is fine, you know. So I was like, working, working, working. And you can tell that that spread, which is like, it's got a lot of attention. It's got a lot of love in there. Yeah. <laughs> and as you go, it's like, ah. Yeah, no, that picture yeah. is, that's the one that I think about. I'm like, oh, that book. It's just, that's like the, such an arresting image. It's so oh, beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. 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 I, lo- I love it. It was, it was quite a journey. Yeah, you can really tell like there's a lot of journey. love in all these character designs. Yeah. You can, it's, it's very visible. Thank you. Um, so I'm guessing you got a lot of good advice, or hopefully you got a lot of good advice during this whole process of making a, a children's book and publishing it. What do you think the best piece of advice you got was? Oh man. Or at least the most useful piece of advice. Yeah, no, uh, like, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> coming from, I mean, okay. Honestly, coming from someone that didn't, I couldn't fathom, imagine I would be here doing this, right. having had, you know, making my own so I couldn't even com- even think about that happening at all. Um, I think, I guess, you know, a, lo- a lot of my teachers at the, the academy just so like don't, just, if, even if you think it's a bad idea, just start, right. do it, draft something just you know write like write the idea down draw it out do it and keep just keep doing it mm-hmm. honestly repetition and practice is is, is right. what's going to get you to mm-hmm. really exercise those muscles and like get you get mm-hmm. your creative juices flowing it's it's a you know you you have to work at it right and i think that's that's probably the biggest thing and there's going to be days where you super don't want to there's gonna be, there's like i i super i just don't i don't right. want to do it but you've got to gotta do it you gotta you gotta do something even if you don't think it's gonna be it's not gonna be my best work I don't have any ideas right now just start do like an hour do something mm-hmm. it's really that that diligence that's that's gonna be that's gonna make make right. or break you I, I feel like yeah. right. and I think I told you tomorrow morning I'm gonna be sitting down with a, a nine-year-old yeah. who wrote her very own book and I'm very excited about it so, so for a kid like that maybe who's starting to think about wanting to be an author wanting to be an illustrator what kind of advice would you give that kid yeah, that's great because she is so young and she is already thinking about right. thinking about doing all of that. Um, I think what helped me a lot for this book, and she's so young, so she has so much time. Um, is just I dove head first and did so much reading, just so much. I just ate children's books. I just right. read them all, read as many as I could, exposed myself to all these different these different stories, different forms of art, different, just, I think, like, absorbing 
all of that, like all those different stories, it really helps. It really helps to right. kind of broaden your mind, kind of give you give you some ideas you had you probably wouldn't have thought of. And I think it just to get all all of those different things, and also to talk to like minded people. Mm -hmm. I think a the other thing that was really helpful for me was like having a critique group. So I would advise her like talk to your other artist friends, talk to yeah. your other you know friends that like to write. Sit down, like think about this stuff, like bounce it. It's it's amazing what you can learn from you know from your peers, and I think right. yeah, it's super helpful for me. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I think we have one last question, and then we ask we've asked all the other two authors, but we're gonna ask everybody this question okay. because at Tandem, we are the children's book people. So we think a lot about books, what our favorite books are. Do you have a favorite children's book? I or a favorite, you know, five or whatever. You know. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to pick one. It is hard to pick one. Yeah. I, I don't, I definitely don't have a favorite. Um, you know, there's so many. I I think what, well, it's fresh in my mind because I actually just befriended her on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Because, um, it, so the other part that's been like just freaking awesome about this is when, you know, I'll get random little notices from Instagram saying like this library or this you know this school like tag, tags me it's like reading Jess Hong's lovely and it's just like Ugh. like that's like the right. best you know when I can hear like real people real families like reading reading and enjoying the book and you know someone um an organization tagged me but as well as like other other children's books and Adam Kim uh, no kimchi for me. <laughs> she was tagged on there. Yeah, it's so cute. And I love that book because, of course, because cats. Most valuable animal. Because cats. The best. Just the best. The most wonderful animal mm -hmm. in the world. And Korean, you know, right. so I was just like, oh, oh my god. And like, I loved it, you know, like, I just thought her book was so cute, like, so, so good. I, I absolutely loved it. And, you know, I, I went and saw her. She was tagged with me. I was like, oh, that's amazing. So I like, added her and I... I commented, you know, on one of her, I was like, love your book, think it's great, and, right. and she, like, wrote, she's like, oh, I'm such a fan, I was like, I'm such a fan, I love you, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. That's pretty great. It's pretty yeah. Great. And I was just like, oh my god, like, look at this, look, look, it's so, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, so her book is really fresh in my mind right now. I literally just wrote, just reread it last night. Right. Because I Listen, wanted to. No kimchi for me? Yes. Yeah. Check it out. It's about a little cat girl that, you know, Korean cat girl, she doesn't, she's not a fan of kimchi, and that's okay. That's yeah. Awesome. It's really it's cute. Awesome. It's adorable. Well, as we tie things up, is there, if people want to find out more about you, follow what you're up to, where where can they find you on the internet? I have a website, um, jesshong.net, and, or, and I'm on Instagram, at jesshongdraws. Awesome. Yes. Well, everyone should go check out all of your stuff. Everyone should buy this book, Lovely, because it's great. Mm -hmm. And I'm really happy that I was able to sit down with you tonight and talk to you about all this stuff because I love this book and I love getting to talk to authors. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. This was this was it's a great. lot less awkward than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, it's always fun to sit down with someone who loves cats. I mean, yeah. I mean, we could we could. I mean, I could talk to you about cats just for another interview. We'll another just have to have interview, a, yeah, a special we, author interview to talk only about cats. Can we do that? I mean, I don't see why. I would love to. Everyone really. just stay posted for more cat interviews. If you're right. into the cats, sit. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to turn off the camera now. Thank you. <laughs>